Hello, I'm Tom and welcome to the Welsh Woodman Workshop. I've got a really special project to share with you tonight. We're going to be making a wood turned oh, cannonball holder for this cannonball. Hope you enjoy. There's a little story behind this. Uh, a friend of mine has been serving in the Royal Navy his entire career and he's currently serving as the duty officer for HMS Victory in Portsmouth. This is very close to where this cannonball was dredged up from the bottom of the ocean, so it's really, really old, very heavy. So we're gonna be wood turning a base out of oak to put this cannonball on display. So here's the material we're gonna start off with. I actually cut and season this wood myself, so we've gotta get it leveled off, and we'll do our design out of this. Right, first thing we do is find the center. This piece is not completely round, and obviously a bit wobbly as well in terms of being flat. So those are my center points that side. Do the same on this side. I'm going to put it between the centers. So I'm find my middle point. Bring my tail stock up to support it. Then I'm going to extend the quill. And I'm using a full ring center on this. I really like full ring centers. It gives you lots of support when turning. So I'm going to make sure it clears the tool rests before I turn the machine on. And stand out the line of fire just in case it does come off. So I'm going to nibble away at the material, so I'm going to try and make this into more of a round type shape and I've found this by nibbling away, especially with really rock hard wood, uh, like this oak that's been seasoned for about five years, rather than trying to take all the high spots across the, the piece, nibble away in small little sections, it's a little bit nicer uh, on, your, on your body. I'm going to have to do this again when it's in the check later on, so I'm just trying to get it into the round a bit more now so it'll save me a bit of time later on. So I'm going to have to true and face up the top my phone coming in from the side is a little bit easier than sort of pushing in from the centre as you get less of a, a tool overhang with that. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead because it's quite a lot I had to take off but I did move my tool rest around the side of the piece to help me to do this. Little shear cut to face off. I've marked on my jaw marks and I'm using the parting tool to put in a little mortise and just to save time I'm going to cut off that because it's a bit more safe than parting it off the actual piece and using the little Japanese handsaw to help me to do that. Now really really great thing I've got in the chuck is this spur adapter so you can hold the spur, take it out of the chuck and you're straight on to the mortise. So this is the time that I can actually face up the, the bottom and true up the sides before I can start working on my shape. Now this is going to be the bottom of the cannonball holder I'm currently working on. So I'm doing some push and shear scrapes to get it all nice and leveled off. I'm doing a push cut now because I want to make an undercut on the piece of material. So if the wood ever did move in the future, it's going to act like a tripod and make it a bit more stable because always three points of the piece is going to be touching the floor. I'm going to cut in a mortise and that's why I'm going to remount the bottom and in order to help me get an accurate mortise so this is nice and stable on the lathe I'm going to use my outside calipers that I've already preset to the size of my jaws and I'm going to move over now to cutting the groove and a final undercut so you can see it's a little bit wobbly the piece on the lathe at the moment and that's because I unmounted it did another project and put it back on which lost concentricity so be aware if you, you're going to work on more than one project at one time uh, so I'm just setting my outside calipers to the diameter of the ball so I know how much of a groove to take off so I've remounted this now and I'm going to be working on the top face so the, the hollow and the side profile so I'm going to work and uh, do a little cove so I want you to look at the way the tool is positioned so the handle is down and I'm rocking with my body to, to make this cove so it's really really nice and stable uh, stance makes it nice and easy and you could do this all day uh, doing it this way rather than just working with your arms. So a little zoom into what I'm doing, so I'm cutting downhill, rubbing the bevel of the tool, coming to the bottom of the cove, then sort of go in the opposite direction to meet in the middle of the cove. Now as I'm hogging away material, the finish on this isn't too bad at the moment, but on my final cut I want to make it as smooth a transition as possible from the top right to the bottom of that cove to make all my lines blend in nicely. So I'm just taking off the top corner, making a little chamfer. And now the easy bit is just like turning in any average bowl. So I'm just hogging out the center of this material. Apologies for my arm being the way 
uh, for most of these shots. It's the first time filming with this lathe. I'm hoping to design and make a camera rig. Any suggestions for better filming? Much appreciated. So if you can leave a comment down below, really, really appreciate that. So I'm going to do my final check to make sure it fits nicely. Yeah, happy with that fit. So I'm going to sharpen my tools and then do a final finishing cut. So taking off a tiny bit of material, but making sure it's really sharp so that the, the finish of the surface is nice. And I'll just cut down on my sanding time by about half doing it that way. So that's my final cut. Happy with that. Just going to work a little bit more on the OG shape for the rim just to make it sort of blend in with those coves on the side a little bit better and i'm gonna smoothen out that og with a nice negative rake scraper just to, to make the line flow a little bit better and to take off any sharp corners so you always want to do that especially with pieces that are going to be handled or knocked around take off sharp corners because it avoids uh, edges splitting off then uh, essentially there we go. I'm going to give it a couple of spray coats of lacquer, so three in total. And you notice I've got the towel around my chuck and the lathe bed, so it's quite sticky, this lacquer, so it's really important to protect those. And this is just the, the easiest way I've found to, to do in this. So, tiny bits of lacquer. It's best to, to build up this finish. I denib it, so cut it back in between each coat. So here's the finished project. Really heavy with the cannonball in, so I'm gonna try and make this quick. You can see it holds the cannonball quite nicely. If we take the cannonball out, the nice little hollow there to hold the ball. And what's really cool about this piece, if you zoom in, we can see you've got these medullary rays uh, going across this lovely piece of oak, which is often seen in oak. Little OG on the top to blend in the top cove inside there and I want the bottom of the base to be further out because I think the idea behind this is it's going to be a little door rest outside and it's had three spray coats of lacquer to sort of help prevent weathering. So I really hope you've enjoyed tonight's project. It's been a challenge definitely filming on the, the new lathe but if you want to support me and the channel please give us a thumbs up, uh, comment below and I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe if you haven't done so already as that will allow me to bring more videos like this your way. So hope to see you on future videos. Dialchen Vaur, Nostar.